Hi everybody. Using shape burst fills provides an interesting alternative to simple coloring of states or countries and can add to the visual appeal of a map. It can also be used to create a vintage style look, often seen on old maps and globes. In this video, we'll create a basic map of some U.S. states. We'll use a shape file from the Census Bureau. There's a link in the description to download this file. First, we'll load the file into QGIS. This is the U.S. file with Alaska, Hawaii, and territories removed. I'll change the CRS to Albers Equal Area Conic 102003 just because that's my preferred CRS for the U.S. Now we need to color the states. First, I'll try the categorized method. I'll open the attribute table. There's an attribute called GOID. This is a number from 1 to 50 that identifies each state. We can use this as the attribute to categorize the layer. Double click on the layer to open layer properties and set the top menu to categorized. Set value to GOID, color ramp to random colors, and click classify. Click apply and you'll see this. There are two problems here. The colors are pretty ugly and there are too many of them. I don't need to show a unique color for each state. I only want enough colors to separate them. This usually takes about five colors. I need a way to limit the colors applied to the states to about five. This is easy to do. First, reset the symbology for the states layer to single symbol. This will make them all the same color. It doesn't matter what the color is, so ignore whatever color QGIS assigns to it. Open the processing toolbox. Open cartography and double click topological coloring. This window will appear. Input layer should be the states layer. Set the number of colors you want, then click run. You can ignore the other settings. When it's finished, click close. Nothing will look any different on your map, but you'll see a new layer called colored. Open the attribute table for this layer and you'll see a new column called color ID. A number from 1 to 5 has been assigned to each state. Now we can use these numbers to apply a categorized styling to the states and we'll only get 5 different colors instead of 50. Before we proceed, we need to save this layer as a permanent layer, so right click on it and select Make Permanent, then save the file to your computer. Double click on the colored layer to open layer properties and set the top menu to categorized. Set the value to color ID and click classify. Clicking apply shows this. The map is now limited to five colors, but they're not the colors I want, so I'll change that now. To change each of the colors, move the window back up and double click on the first little swatch to open the symbol selector window. Click on the color bar to change the color to something more suitable. I'm using more muted colors from an old map. Here are the colors I've pulled from that map. I'll use the orange color first. The HTML code for this color is F1D7BD, so I'll click on the color bar for the first group and enter that. Clicking OK then Apply shows this. Looks good so far. Repeat the color change process for the remaining four categories. Here are the HTML values I used. At the bottom of the list is an item called All Other Values. What's this? It's not uncommon when using categorized symbology to get a category like this or one called Null. These are usually junk values. Just uncheck the boxes for them or delete them. Here's how that looks. And our base map is done. Now we can move on to the shape burst fills. QGIS can create several different types of shape burst effects. I'll create these versions white fill with colored edges, colored fill with white edges, and colored fills with colored edges. All of these methods use two layers one for the shape burst effect and the base layer. The shape burst layer interacts with the base layer to create the effect. First, we'll create the white fill with colored edges. Here's the final result. Right click on the states layer and select Duplicate Layer. 
Rename this layer Shape Burst and move it directly above the States layer. Double click the Shape Burst layer to open layer properties. Set the top menu to Single Symbol and click on Simple Fill. Set the Symbol layer type to Shape Burst Fill. There are two ways to proceed here, using the Two Color or Color Ramp setting. Both produce the same result and involve setting two colors white with 100% opacity and white with 0% opacity. To use the two color method, which I usually use, click on the top color bar to open the color picker. Set the color to white and the opacity to zero. Next, click on the lower color bar and set this to white with 100% opacity. The top color bar will be the edge color. The 0% opacity will let the solid color of the base layer show through. And the bottom color bar will be the interior color of the states. The 100% white will cover up the base layer's color. Under Shading Style, check the Set Distance box and enter a value of 3 to 5. I'll use 4. Move the Blur Strength setting to about halfway and click OK. Here's what you'll see. You can tweak this effect in several ways. Increasing the Set Distance value increases the width of the colored edges. Here's how a value of 10 looks. The blur setting also has a strong effect. Here's how a blur value of 18 looks. Lowering the opacity of the white fill color from 100% to something lower lets some of the base color show through. Here I've lowered the opacity on the white color from 100% to 60. Next we'll do the colored fill with white edges. I don't much care for this variation, but you might, so here goes. Duplicate the States layer and rename it Shape Burst, then double click on it to open Layer Properties. Set the top menu to Single Symbol, click Simple Fill, and set Symbol Layer Type to Shape Burst Fill. Set both color bars to white, with the top one at 100% opacity and the bottom one at 0%. Check Set Distance and set it about 4 and set the blur about halfway. Click OK and you'll see this. The state borders have disappeared. To fix this, duplicate the base states layer and move it above the shape burst layer. I've renamed this layer Borders. Double click on it to open Layer Properties and set the top menu to Single Symbol. Click on Simple Fill, then on the color bar. Set the fill color to No Brush, then click OK. Here's what that does. You can tweak this effect using the same methods I mentioned earlier. Finally, we'll try the colored fills with colored edges variation. This is my favorite version of this technique. It's a stronger effect than some of the other methods, and I just like it, so there's that. Duplicate the base layer and rename the duplicate to Shape Burst, then move it just above the base layer. Double click on the Shape Burst layer to open Layer Properties. Set the top menu to Single Symbol, click on Simple Fill, and set Symbol Layer Type to Shape Burst Fill. Set the top color bar to black with 50% opacity, and set the bottom color bar to white. The opacity doesn't matter for this method. Check the Set Distance box and enter 10, then set the Blur to about 10. Finally, scroll down and open the Layer Rendering section and set the Layer Blending Mode to Burn, then click OK. Here's what you'll see. This effect can be tweaked in several ways. Increasing the opacity of the black color stop to 80% intensifies the colors overall, while reducing the opacity to 25% tones things down. Lowering the set distance value to 5 constrains the edge effect, while increasing the blur value to 18 smooths things out. If the state borders are too strong for you, here's an alternative look. To do this, duplicate the base states layer and set the top menu to Single Symbol, and click on Simple Fill. Set the Stroke Color to White and the Fill Color to No Brush. Move this layer above the Shape Burst layer. 
The border looks a little weak to me, so I'll increase the stroke weight to 0.5 millimeters. That's better. Some maps show groups of states in the same color. For example, maps of the American Civil War often show Union and Confederate states like this. Adding a shape burst around a group of states can help set them off from the rest of the map. This is pretty easy to do in QGIS. Here are the steps. We'll create a simple version of a U.S. Civil War map. First, we have to select the states that made up the groupings. I'll start with the Confederacy. Click on the Select Features by Area button. Hold down the Shift key and click on the states you want to group, in this case the Confederate states. Once they're selected, right-click on the layer and go to Export Save Selected Features As. Name this layer CSA. It will be added to the map. Turn off the CSA layer and you should still see the CSA states selected. If not, reselect them. Click on the states layer and go to Vector Geoprocessing Tools Dissolve. In the Dissolve window, check the Selected Features Only box, click Run, then Close. Here's what that does. The CSA states are now a single polygon in a new layer called Dissolved. To get our shape burst fill, Double click on the dissolved layer to open layer properties. Click on Simple Fill and select Shape Burst. Set the top color bar to gray at 100% opacity and the bottom one to white at 100% opacity. Click on Set Distance and enter 4 and move the blur slider to the middle, then click OK. Here's how that looks. Next, we need to restore the state borders. Turn on the CSA layer and move it to the top of the Layers panel. Double click the layer to open Layer Properties and set the top menu to Single Symbol. Click on Simple Fill and set the Fill Style to No Brush and the Stroke Color to Gray or whatever color you want. Click OK and you'll see this. If you like this effect, you're done. This method puts the shape burst around the entire grouping. If you want a shape burst for each state, here's how to do that. Since this method is really pretty easy, I'll start from the beginning. With the Select Features by Area tool, select the CSA states. With them selected, right-click on the layer name and go to Export Save Selected Features As. Name this layer CSA Fills. It will be added to the map. Double-click the new layer to open Layer Properties. Click on Simple Fill and select Shape Burst. Set the top color to gray at 100% opacity and the bottom to white at 100%. Set the Set Distance to 3 and the Blur to Medium. Here's how that looks. I need to restore the state borders. Duplicate the CSA Fills layer and rename it CSA Borders and move it above the CSA Fills layer. Double click to open layer properties and click on Simple Fill. Set the symbol layer type to Simple Fill. Set the fill color to No Brush. Now I'll repeat this process for the Union and Territories. There's another way to style shape burst fills that uses the expression editor to create lighter and darker edge colors. If you're interested, see Creating Shape Burst Fills in QGIS Map Design by Anita Grazer and Gretchen N. Peterson, a book I recommend. Personally, I don't see any real advantage to this method, but you might find it useful. Check out my designer's guide to creating great maps at themapguide.net slash guide and download two free chapters. That's all for now. See you next time.